Fuel cell. My fuel cell doesn't work. Why? Well, it's a pretty complicated device, so definitely could be a problem with the fuel cell, by the way. It's not impossible. I mean, a fuel cell has got a couple of parts. But the first thing you got to make sure with fuel cell is that you actually have fuel in the fuel cell. No joke. That's pretty important. Will not work without fuel cell. And I'm not belittling the point, but it is pretty essential. Make sure that the fuel cell has fuel in it. I had another owner where the tube that, there's a tube from the cap that goes to the bottom had fallen off and you could only see it in the flashlight. So there was fuel in the fuel canister, but you had to actually notice with a flashlight that the little straw that went to the fuel cap had fallen to the bottom. So that was an expensive, frustrating experience that I lived. There is fuel there. You ask the question, but what you forgot to say is the fuel straw still connected, the fuel cap connected to the bottom. And I didn't, and we took the fuel thing out, went back to service, came back, didn't work, then... Huh. It was extremely frustrating and embarrassing. So didn't know that problem. Now I know. So make sure that the fuel straw at the top works. The other thing too that you want to make sure is that the uh, voltage sense and the output are still connected, obviously, to your unswitched distribution. That's pretty obvious. This thing will never output more than, you know, whatever it's rated at. So if it's a 210 model, it's only going to output maybe 8, 9 amps. So it's not like you're, if you have a wire fuse that's 10 or 15, it's never going to blow unless there was a short. Most of the problems with this is related to overheating, I would say. Right? Like if you're in a container and it's complete, installed in a place that's too tight, there's no ventilation, and the weather outside is 100 degrees, it might give you an alarm, but it's going to tell you, I'm shutting myself down, it's too hot. That's one. The other thing, too, is someone has removed the methanol fuel cell and put it on its side. And there's actually, believe it or not, inside it's, it needs methanol to kind of prime itself inside. If it's not there, it can't work. And that's why the, when you sell them, there's a little service thing that you can squeeze in the nozzle where the water comes out. So if someone takes it out of his car in the winter and puts it on the side and then puts it back at the beginning of the spring, I've had owners say, hey, Jeff, it's not working. They take the service bottle that they have, they put it in, squeeze it in, and then it's primed, and it's not a lot, and then it basically starts working. So that generally is what I've seen with EFOIs. And that's about it in terms of other diagnostic. If it gives you an error at the unit itself, it's actually going to tell you, because this device actually is sort of a little computer. It's not stupid. It's constantly looking at error codes, and it might be throwing you an error code, which is great. Error codes are awesome because you're not guessing why something doesn't work. You just error code 79 error code 61. Um, and now that's basically how you troubleshoot a methanol fuel cell. Pretty straightforward. Any questions on that?